Last week on this channel, we told you that Jaden Reed, Joe Mixon, Cooper Cup, Ken Walker, Chris Godwin, Alvin Kamara, and Kyle Pitts were going to dominate fantasy in week one. You can go fact check me. Eight out of 10 players we hit on. This week, I want to do the same for you. 10 players that you need to start because they're going to dominate and win your matchup here in week two. The first name is J.K. Dobbins. He faces the Carolina Panthers heading over to Carolina. He is my RB21 on the week, and this matchup is so juicy you can't avoid it. Carolina gave up the second most points to running backs in week one, 32 PPR points. And in week one, the Panthers defense gave up the third most rushing yards, the ninth most total yards overall. They gave up the most points at 47 and yards per attempt. They almost gave up five yards per attempt versus the Saints. J.K. Dobbins looked so good coming back from that injury. What an inspiration he is towards ACL, then the Achilles. He's still coming back, being that dude. In week one, J.K. Dobbins had the most rushing yards, the highest yards per carry. He had the most explosive run rate, the highest explosive run rate. Missed tackles forced per attempt. He was top five. Yards after contact per attempt, he was top seven. He looked incredible, and this new look offense that the Chargers have with Roman and Harbaugh is rushing a lot. They were fifth in rushing yards in week one with 176. The Chargers are the clear betting favorite in this game, so they could be rushing the ball a lot to end the game. They are five and a half point favorites at this point. I think J.K. Dobbins gets over 100 yards again, a touchdown, and over 16 fantasy points. The second player that we are starting with confidence two weeks in a row now is Christopher Gawin at the Detroit Lions. This game has all the ingredients for fantasy success. The Lions look like a great matchup for fantasy wide receivers this year. They will score a ton of points on offense, and then their secondary is a little bit suspect. They got some weak spots, so you can throw on them. Detroit gave up the second most points to fantasy wide receivers in week one. They gave up over 47 PPR points to the wide receiver position. Of course, they had to face Cooper Cup. This game is the highest over under of the week, by the way, 51 and a half points. We should see a ton of fantasy points in this one. The Lions are seven and a half point favorites in this one, which makes the Bucks those underdogs coming in, meaning they might have to throw the ball throughout this entire game. Goblin was the highest targeted wide receiver in week one. This team was super vocal throughout the offseason on how they wanted to feature him. It's early, but in week one, they held their bargain. Godwin had eight targets leading the team. I predict he comes away with six receptions, 80 yards, and at least 15 PPR points. God him season is here. And that takes us to my spicy, hot, bold take of the week. I believe the king himself, Durka Durka Derrick Henry, bounces back in week two in a huge way, putting up 100-plus total yards, one rushing touchdown, and 18-plus points in PPR formats. He faces the Las Vegas Raiders in week one. The Raiders gave up the ninth most points to fantasy running backs, almost 25 points they gave up to running backs. Their rush defense, respectfully, looks like maybe one of the worst in the NFL, at least after one week. In one week, they were uh, top five in rushing yards allowed. They allowed six and a half yards per attempt, which is absolutely nutty. Respectfully to Raiders fans, this just smells like a blowout. And the sports books are going to agree with me on that. This is the largest spread of the week. Baltimore are the heaviest favorites in this game compared to any other game this week. And what happened in Kansas City for the Ravens, in my opinion, is an outlier. Remember, this is a team that won more games than any team in the NFL last year. They were down for most of this game. In fact, from 13 minutes onward in the second quarter, they were down and never gained a lead again. Look for the King to bounce back in a big way in a game they should dominate. All right, my quarterback streamer of the week. If you're struggling with quarterbacks, you can start this guy with confidence. That is Matthew Stafford at the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona gave up the most points to fancy quarterbacks in week one, over 31 points. Now, of course, they faced Josh Allen. So, you know, respectfully, what can you do? However, there is a ton of evidence, even going back to last year, that their defense is well below average. Last year, they were top 10 in yards allowed to opposing offenses, and they were top two in total points allowed to opposing offenses as well. While the Cardinals defense is atrocious, the good news for this game, as far as game script goes, is their offense is definitely improved. Remember, guys, this team gave the Buffalo Bills a real fight in week one. They led the entire first half versus the Buffalo Bills, and it was a neutral game script all the way up until the end of the third quarter. What I'm telling you is the Cardinals are not just going to lie down and take it. They are going to fight back. That is great for neutral game script for Matthew Stafford needing to throw the ball. And if you don't take my word for it, how about Vegas Sportsbooks? Because this game is tied for the closest spread of the week, 
only one and a half points in that spread. Puka Nakua, I get it out indefinitely, but we've seen Demarcus Robinson step up really, really well for him. And of course, Cooper Cup is Himothy. He looks like 2021 version of himself. Great streaming option in week two. I'm predicting at least two passing touchdowns and a top 10 fantasy finish. We're going to stay in this matchup for my next running back. That is James Conner on the opposite side facing these Rams. My RB16 on the week. The Rams gave up the third most points to fantasy running backs in week one, over 31 points. And James Conner in week one himself was very good. He had 20 total touches, 83 total yards, a touchdown, and over 19 points in PPR four bats. Trey Benson is very clearly a handcuff backup right now. He only played on one single drive. And the Rams defense in week one was pretty suspect against the rush. Now, of course, they face the Detroit line backfield, so we have to contextualize that. But in week one, they were top 10 rushing yards allowed, total yards allowed, and yards per attempt. Great matchup, great player, reliable volume, potential barn burner. James Conner's got to be started in all formats. I'm predicting 90 plus all-purpose yards, one touchdown, and at least 15 PPR points. Okay, as a Commanders fan, I can't express how good this next one is. One of my most confident smash starts of week two, that is Malik Neighbors at the Washington Commanders. Yes, against my team. Now, I'm aware, guys, right now, at the time of recording this, that Malik Neighbors had some soreness in his knee. We will monitor that. If he is out, you can flex Wandell Robinson, in my opinion, who had 12 targets last week. But let's talk about Malik Neighbors as if he is going to play. Washington gave up the most points to fantasy wide receivers in week one. Guys, Washington gave up 51 PPR points to fantasy wide receivers. Gawain, eight. Jalen McMillan, eight. Mike Evans, eight. The commander's defense in week one was fourth in passing yards allowed, seventh in total yards allowed, and they gave up 37 points, which was the second most on the week. I know, I know, Daniel Jones is not good. But I would respectfully argue that when these two garbage cans face off, and I'm saying garbage can one is Daniel Jones, but garbage can two is the Washington commander secondary. When they face off, I think Daniel Jones actually has the upper hand in this game. The volume will 100% be there for Malik Neighbors. He played 70 out of 70 snaps in week one. He literally did not even come off the field for some damn Gatorade. All right. I think the talent is there. He's going to shine in week two. I'm predicting a massive game, 100 yards, one receiving touchdown, 20 PPR points. I think it's his I'm here type of performance. The seventh player, we're starting with confidence. Another streaming quarterback, Justin Fields at the Denver Broncos. We're going to take a little bit of a different angle here, okay? But Denver in week one gave up the seventh most points to fantasy quarterbacks. But we're taking a different angle. Because more importantly, in week one, Justin Fields had 14 rushing attempts. And what's perfect about this matchup for him is the Broncos' rush defense is genuinely awful. So, so bad. I mean, look at last year. They were top six in rushing yards allowed, uh, yards per attempt allowed, total yards allowed, total points allowed. And then if you look in week one, they were top 13 in rushing yards allowed and yards per attempt. Even 33-year-old Geno Smith was able to scramble right up the middle against this defense and score a rushing touchdown. I believe Justin Fields is going to give you a solid floor, 80 rushing yards, 200 total yards on the ground and, and, you know, in the air, and two total touchdowns. I think he's a smash this week. All right, the eighth player. Redemption's on my mind when I think about you. Drake London, please. Please, brother. This is your last shot. Drake London at the Philadelphia Eagles. And week one, the Eagles gave up the third most points two fantasy wide receivers. And let me tell you something. Last week, I was begging you guys on this video for week one to start Jaden Reed versus this Eagles secondary. And my comment section was full of Eagles fans yelling at me, telling me that their secondary was far improved. They drafted a cornerback in the first round and a second round. And just because they have two rookies on their team means automatically all their problems are solved. And now it's a bad matchup. Like, what are we talking about, guys? Uh, what, what are we talking about? Uh, rookies? Rookies are the fix. Like maybe over time they will, but very rarely do you find a Sauce Gardner level player that just instantly makes your defense shut down. I know Quinion Mitchell's great, but this is absolutely still a, a matchup that we, we are targeting. Hopefully you did it last week when I told you to start Jaden Reed. I'm begging you to do it this week, starting Drake London. Yes, the Eagles secondary could be better over time, but right now, until proven otherwise, it is a great matchup to target. Here's the reality for Drake London, though. It is a put up or shut up game. All right. If you can't do it on Monday Night Football, I'm personally ready to change the narrative on you. But let's remind you just for a second how good this matchup is. In 2023, the Eagles were top seven in passing guards allowed per game, 
total yards allowed per game, total points allowed per game. And week one, the Eagles defense gave up 251 passing yards. They gave up 414 total yards and they gave up 29 points. Again, Eagles fans, all right? I love y'all. Y'all just got to relax a little bit, okay? You have to prove that you are a bad matchup for fantasy football and then we won't target you. But you got to put up or shut up first. So I am predicting five receptions, 50 yards and a receiving touchdown, 16 PPR points for Drake London. All right, the ninth player that you've got to get into your lineups is Brian Robinson versus the New York Giants. My RB22 on the week. The Giants in week one gave up the 11th most points to fancy running backs. You saw it. Aaron Jones, Ty Chandler, they had a day. And I was pleasantly surprised with Brian Robinson's role in week one. He was used in every scenario. Early downs, goal line, third down snaps. He was used all over the field and in a game where the commanders were dominated the entire time i was worried maybe negative game script would have meant an austin eckler type of game that's not what happened we still saw brian robinson finish with 17 total touches including four targets which matched austin eckler who's supposedly you know our pass catching specialist it seems like brian robinson might be game script proof at this point and now this offense gets to face the giants who were absolutely dominated in week one by the vikings 28 points to the vikings i think the commanders are going to figure it out here 20 total touches for brian robinson the volume will be there 80 total yards and i think he gets into the end zone again all right the 10th player we're going to talk about here is the the dj moore at the houston texans my wide receiver 21 on the week. Houston gave up the fifth most points to fantasy wide receivers in week one. Let's be honest, last week was an absolute mess for the Bears offense. However, this might be a better matchup for them. They don't have to face Legereus Sneed at least at minimum. Now, here's the deal. Here's what we know for sure. Keenan Allen dealing with an injury. Roma Dunze unlikely to play with a knee injury. DJ Moore could get a 30% target share hit here in week one. I mean, we have seen Caleb. He targeted Keenan Allen, what, 11 times last week? We could totally see DJ Moore with 12 targets in this game. You know, I know they got some really good cornerback play over there in Houston, but I still believe in Caleb, and I could see DJ Moore and him kind of getting this mind meld going on in week two. 70 catches, 70 yards, and over 15 PPR points for DJ Moore here in week one. All right, those are 10 players that you absolutely need to find a way to put them in your lineups. They will win you your week. Do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe if you like the content. Last thing I'll say is if you have a start sick question or a trade question you want to ask us, please check out the pinned comment. Ask us. We can answer at any point when we're uh, not live or when we are live or offline. We are here to help. Check out the pinned comment. I appreciate y'all for being here with us and I'll see you in the next one. All up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.